Hello everyone and welcome to Scottish Summit 2021. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening depending on wherever you are joining us from. My name is Priyash Vag and today I am joined by Lin Zhao Win and together we are presenting our session on approval process using adaptive cards with Dataverse connector in Power Automate. I am sure every one of you are having a great time learning new stuff in this Scottish Summit and before we proceed with our session, we would first like to thank our sponsors for the event. So here are our sponsors, Scriptrunner, DQ Global, Proximo3, Respire, Agilisys and Hitachi Solutions. So before we proceed, we'll start off by introducing ourselves to you. Uh, this is me, my name is Priyash Vag. I'm a Microsoft Business Applications MVP and I work with CloudFront Technologies in Mumbai and I work as a Dynamics 365 Technical Consultant. That is my Twitter handle on screen. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm available to interact with you at any point of time. And all tweets that you make today, please make sure you use the hashtag Scottish Summit 2021. I'll let Lynn introduce himself to you and then we move on with our session. Over to you, Lynn. Thanks, Priyash. Hi, everyone. My name is Lynn. I'm Microsoft Business Application MVP and I'm currently working as a Senior Technical Consultant at TXC Technology in Wellington, New Zealand. I usually write blog posts around Power Automate, Dataverse, Dynamics 365, and sometimes even Power Apps, Canvas Apps. If you want to learn more about my blog posts or other Power App platform stuff that I share, you can follow me on the, my Twitter. My Twitter handle is just my full name, Lin Win. Yeah, well, enough about us, and let's move on to the adaptive cards you know, and start the session. Over to you, Priyash. Um, thank you for that introduction, Lin. That was superb. All right. Uh, let's start about firstly talking what adaptive cards are and uh, how they are structured, how they are authored, how you can use them and how you can use them in Microsoft Teams in particular. Right? So what are adaptive cards? They are platform agnostic uh, snippets of UI and they are all in JSON. So it's very easy to develop these cards on your own and they take the shape and form of the uh, host application. So if they are in Microsoft Teams, the card will look like uh, Microsoft Teams uh, inbuilt uh, function itself or if it's Outlook then it will look like something that's in Outlook. So let me first uh, go to the official website of Adaptive Cards. So the official website is adaptivecards.io and uh, Adaptive Cards are presented by Microsoft uh, but on the website you really don't need a login because um, it's not a sessionized uh, website so to say. Um, as you can see uh, it's available for you know Android, iOS, uh, you know windows so yeah so there's there's no way you can log in so let's start looking at how the designer looks so they have an inbuilt uh, designer right away on the website itself where you can start designing and building out your adaptive card once it is ready you can copy that entire code and take it to your application and uh, based on what type of adaptive card you're making it will uh, take the shape and form of uh, your adaptive card like that so as you can see, this is how your adaptive card will look like. This is the designer. That's the that's your card. And on the top, you have your uh, common controls. And let me select Teams because that's the card that we are making. So an adaptive card for Teams dark version will look like this. And uh, on the left hand side, you can see there are different elements that you can use across the containers. There are some input controls as well. And if you select one of these, you'll see how um, each of them are laid out, uh, how they have their own properties which you can use. And maybe if you're um, generating some sample data, uh, you can you have the sample data um, editor at the bottom where you can generate your sample data and use those attributes um, in the elements. And you know then you know work your card. Um, you also have the card payload editor. This is the final. Uh, JSON card payload editor which you can use so all you need to do is copy this entire card payload and copy it in your host application you can do this by simply clicking on copy card payload and you're good to go now uh, yeah there is an extensive documentation for this as well um, just like any other API documentation um, you can get a card schema and um, if you go to authoring cards and then go to card schema, uh, this is the schema this is used by the cards uh, in JSON. So this is pretty easy to follow. Uh, for anyone with 
um, little to moderate JSON or uh, coding knowledge, right? So that's um, adaptive cards out of the box. That's how it is. Uh, but if you, since you're not able to save these, there is an extension in Microsoft uh, uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, which is called as Adaptive Card Studio, and you can you know set this extension up and you can save your JSON files and um, likewise save the progress on uh, your adaptive cards. Right? In in Microsoft Teams, um, let me just show you if I simply look for a Microsoft Teams connector. And if lately you've been using Microsoft Teams connector a lot, you'll observe that there are a lot of actions in it, which talks about adaptive cards. So these are different ways of adaptive cards, uh, different actions, and all of them serve uh, a different purpose, uh, though they're a little different from each other, but more or less they are adaptive cards posted to either a Teams channel or a Teams user. So we'll be using some of these in the examples. So moving on to the next section. So let me start talking about the custom approval process. Uh, we chose this just as an example of how useful adaptive cards can be. And hence we are using adaptive cards with teams uh, to fulfill the approval process. Although approvals in flows exist, uh, but this is a nice variation to have in case if you don't want to use the traditional approvals in flow that send requests of approval to um, uh, the ones who are supposed to approve via emails, but rather than you know leverage teams and um, you know have this all data tracked in dynamics 365 so um, so it's just one of several examples uh, you can use adaptive cards and hence um, our example is you know let's design a custom approvals process from the ground up and uh, use adaptive cards to raise a request um, and send it to a send it to someone who is supposed to approve them and based on whether they approve or decline um, send back the response to the original requester so uh, also, we are covering multiple layers of approvals because in case if there are certain requests which um, need multiple people to respond or approve, um, they can do so as well. So next, I will be walking you through the uh, how we have designed, uh, how we have laid this out in Dynamics 365 or Dataverse, so to speak. Uh, I'll talk about the uh, entity structure and then Lynn will take over and talk about um, on, and also show you an example of how this all will work, right? So moving further. So this is our main request table. Um, this is the uh, most high level entity where a requester is the logged in person. Uh, they can just raise a request um, and it could be anything like a time off or time off is a type of request or I want there is a certain sales that is going to happen uh, and um, the customers have requested for a quotation uh, or for a discount on a quotation um, so that you know not all decisions maybe can be taken by the end user so um, in any organization there is a hierarchy where they need to ask someone uh, something or raise a request um, for the approval so we have designed this high level entity which is called as a request entity and um, the one who is supposed to raise a request or one who raises the request they can create um, a record here and um, the approval template is something I will talk about in just a minute, but the approval template is something uh, that defines um, how an approval should go, like something like a time off. If it doesn't need uh, too many, if you don't need to ask too many people about if you can have a quick time off, um, the template is different and then based on that, um, only uh, there will be only one level of approval or if there's the approval template says that this is a sales type of template and you know, this is a multi-level, uh, approval type of template um, and then there are several people involved before the approval can go through finally so that is a different template so you can design you're free to design all these templates of whether it's a hierarchical uh, approval template or if it's a uh, you know single level uh, type of template all these examples will be uh, uh, discussed uh, and uh, you know Lin, Lin will walk you through all of these um, um, in his demo uh, but this is how the high level request entity looks like and then you can see the approvals table so based on the approval template let's say if it's a code template and there are supposed to be uh, three people or two people approving um, a code request uh, then if if the requester they just choose uh, that this is a code type of template um, automatically when they save this record two um, approval records will be created which will have the information of who the first approve uh, first request of approval go to or who the second approval request will go to and so on 
So once all the final decision is made by the last person in the approvals table, uh, the entire uh, the overall request of this approval will either be accepted or rejected. Uh, so that's how the entire cycle will look like, uh, which we'll see more in the demo. Uh, in the second table, I will just talk about how the approval template is designed or how you can uh, keep it more flexible in order to have uh, or in order to design your own uh, approval structure. So an approval template for us looks like this, that you have what type of approval it is, whether it's a time off, whether it's a code risk request or whether it's uh, uh, you know requesting some other resource for some work and then you have level of approval. So level of approval is basically how many approvals you need. Uh, let's say you need three approvals uh, for a code request. So you can select approval type as code and then have three levels and just save this particular template, right? Um, and once you save it, you can, if, if it says three, then you know you enter three different approvals of who it should be. Uh, and based on that, um, you can just use this template in your original request record. So uh, with all this, um, Lin will show how we make a couple of requests, uh, how one of them is rejected and how one of them is approved, uh, taking you through multiple levels of approval. Over to you, Lin. Okay, before we jump into the demo session, let me talk a little bit about the approval process that we have built using the Power Automate so that it's easier for you to understand and follow through during the demo session. The approval types are pretty much similar to the Power Automate approvals. And the first type is the first to respond. For those who don't know Power Automate approvals, the first to respond is you send out the approval to all of the approvers at the same time and whoever approve or reject aside the decision of the request. So let's say the one of the approver approve the request and it doesn't wait for the approval decision from the other approvers and it will proceed as a approved and similarly for the rejection of this request and you know, as soon as somebody rejects the request, the whole request will be rejected. The second one is that everyone must approve. And in this one, the approval request will be only sent to one approver at a time. And once the first approver is approved, it will go into the next level of approval. And then another approver is approved, it will go to the next level. And the final approver is approved, then it goes back to the request as the approve. So it requires all the approvers to approve for the request to be approved. And at any point of the approval process and somebody is rejected and the whole request will be rejected. And there are also approver types and that is how the Power Automate populates the select who will be, who should be the approver for this request. And for this first one, it is hierarchical. It is the just getting the current users manager and line of managers to specify the approvers. So in, in this scenario, we just only have to, let's say, specify three level of approver and the system and Power Automate will automatically pick up the, the requesters manager and managers manager and then like, three level up manager of the requester to send the approvers. The second approver type is just a static and all these approvers are just specified in the approval template and the whole Power Automate engine will just pick up all these users or employees specify in the approval template. Okay, let's move on to the demo and let's see how the whole thing works. In this demo, we will show you how the request is being created in the model driven app site and how the approval templates are being configured and how the approvers are being picked up by the system. After that, we'll go to the Microsoft Teams site and we'll show you how the adaptive cards are being shown to the approver for the approval request. And once, once the approver is approved or rejected, and we'll show you how this request decision is being notified back to the requester. 
in the request, we'll just for the sake of the demo purpose, we'll just repopulate you know, this name and description. Normally, it should be the whole data is being created. The whole request is being created from the related leaf request or any related table. And we populate the who is the requester for this request. And based on the request type, the approval template is automatically being populated. When we check this approval template, in this one, as I mentioned in the previous slides, the approval type is the first to respond. So whoever responds this approval will decide the status of the request. And the approval type is static. So we have to choose the approval one and two because there are two levels of approvals. So let's save this and how let's go and see how it is being triggered. The approver notification in the Microsoft Teams with adaptive cards. Once the request has been saved, the approval rules are just being created based on the approval template that we have selected. Now let's refresh. Now these approval rules are being created by auto automate flow. And there are two levels of approval and based on the approval template, the approvers are James Martin and Claire Jones. Since this is first to respond approval type, the approver notifications are sent to both and the decision for both approvals are in the pending state. Okay, now let's go to the Microsoft Teams as a Claire Jones and see if how the approval notification looks like with adaptive cards. The static approval template was selected for two approvers, James Martin and Claire Jones, and both of these approvers will receive the approval notification in the Teams as an adaptive card. Now I'm logging in as Claire Jones to the Teams. And as you can see, there's an adaptive card approval request and the, there's a name of the approver and the image from the entity image of the employee table. And there are also some request type and description. From here, for example, the approver Claire approved the request from the Teams. Now I click on that. This request will go back into the trigger the bar automate and it will just update the status of the approval. Now we are in the Microsoft Teams of the requester. I'm logging in as the requester British account. And as you can see, there's the adaptive card notifications notifying the requester that the approval that the requester submitted has been approved by Claire Jones. For the second scenario, we'll just create the request for the codes table. Imagine this request is automatically created once the codes discount threshold has a more than certain amount, certain percentage. And this codes approval template is automatically selected for this particular request. For this approval template, it is hierarchical and it is two level approval. What does this mean is those approvers will be automatically selected by the system based on the managers of the requester Priyash. Let's go to the this employee hierarchy chart where we can see the employees tree and in the employee Priyash and its manager I selected as my account so that I can try to demo and replicate and approve it. And it will then again go to Claire Jones. And from there, Claire, I try to reject and we'll see how it notifies back to the requester Priyash account. Okay, let's save the records. Once the request has been saved, all these approvals will automatically be created by the flow based on the approval templates. For this scenario, the approval template is hierarchical and two-level. So it's created for the 
to level of the requester manager. And since this is approval type is everyone must approve, only the first level manager has the approval request and the decision become pending. And for the, the other levels, the decision is empty. Okay, now let's go to log into my team, Microsoft Teams with my account and try to approve it. Now we're logging into the Microsoft Teams as my account, which is the first level approval for this request. And we can see the code discount approval request from Priyash and then let's click on the approve. Once it is approved, it will trigger another flow to update the status of the approval to trigger and send the approval request for the next level approval. Let's go back to the request to see how the status are being changed. Let's refresh the approval rules in the request. And the, as you can see, the first rule has been approved and it goes to the second level approver and it is changed to the pending for the decision. Now let's log into the Microsoft Teams with Claire Jones and this time we'll reject the request and see how it goes. Now we are back into the Microsoft Teams, but this time we're logging in as Claire Jones with the second level approver for this request. Now we are going to reject this request with some reason and we'll submit the rejection. Later in this session, Priyash will explain you how to design these kind of adaptive cards to show and hide the fields of the adaptive card conditionally and how to include the image of the entity and stuff. Okay, now let's back to the request to see how the value has been updated and then we'll go to check the status notification back to the requester. If we refresh the request, we will see able to see that the approval status has been rejected and who rejected and the comments. And we we'll also see the, the whole approval history which comments in the subgrids. Finally, in the Microsoft Teams for the requester, you can see that there's a rejection notification from the last request. And this is pretty much similar to the approval notification. The only difference is the image and the, there's the comments for the rejection. Before I hand over to Priyash for explaining about the adaptive cards, I would like to go through this flow, which is creating approvals on create of this request based on the approval template. The trigger is CDS current environment connector trigger, which is triggering on create of the request row. And once the request is created, get the approval template row from the approval template table based on the lookup value of the request. And there are a couple of variables that I initialize. One is to loop through the current level. And another one is to store the array of emails address of the managers. I'll go through more details about these two variables later in this flow. And there are two types of approvers, as I mentioned. The first one is the hierarchical and the static. And for a hierarchical, we need to get the manager information. Normally, you would just loop through the current user and get the current user's manager first for once, and then another get a row step to get the managers of the manager. But in order to eliminate all these multiple calls, you can call one single get a row step of the CDS current environment connector action by using the expand query. I don't think you would be easily able to type this out you know, by hand. For me, I use the fetch XML tool to just link to those five level up of the current table 
of the request table and to get the expand query. Because this is important, um, these are quite case sensitive and some of the relationships, some of the lookups, they are capital and some of the out of the box lookups, they are all small letters. So I think it is really important to use the tool you know, to avoid all these headaches and getting errors and testing back and forth. So what this step is doing actually is it is just getting the five level up of this requester and using it using the nested expand and once there is a manager of the first level is there we added that manager value into that array as you can see in the expression it is getting the uh, manager of the value if there's this value is null what it does is it, this goalless function will use this empty string instead so basically all these five steps are just the repeating of the same expression but instead of the manager one it will be second level manager and same for manager three and manager four and finally it goes to like requesters managers manager manager managers manager value so that's how you get the uh, all these lookup for these manager lookup for these values. Okay, so the next step is to until level of approval. So as you can see in the first level, a uh, first one, the variable of the current level is zero. And if the current we're just looping through the current level to the level of approval we specify in the approval template. In my example, all these approval templates are two level, so that means we will loop through this loop for two times. So the first, it will create this approval and it will populate with the approver variable. And in this step, it's getting from the variable of the manager array and the level is the current level. So that means it, it will loop through and it will populate with the, each level. And the level of approval to sort the number. And unlike array, this one we need to show is the one, two, three, four. So we add one value to, 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 to do the variable. Then we populate with the request. And the thing is, if the approval is first to respond or a current approval level is zero, we'll mark it as the pending. So what that means is if the for the very first level, we'll always set as pending. And if it is the first to respond, approval type is first to respond, we'll make it as all of these approval as pending. And we'll just increment the variable. So this is how the, we're creating the approvals for hierarchical. And for a static, it is a little bit different. But instead of getting the approval get manager info and getting from the requester, we're just going to populate from the lookups. And how we're going to populate is the same <coughs> uh, we you know, the same expression that we use on the other side. If there is a value for this lookup, we use the goalless function to get this lookup value. And if the lookup value is null, it will be empty string. So this is just repeats for lookup value two and approval three lookup. Prover 4 lookup is also the same, and then Prover 5, they all look the same. 
So this is actually basically this step for static is more simpler to implement. And this is also quite similar, but there's we don't have to worry about level. Here we'll just go through and loop through this approval variable. And if the approval variable current level is equal to empty string, that means there's no approval for this level. And then we will exit from this loop. In our example, there are two level approvals for the static and then we populate the two approvers in the lookup so it will go through the two level approvers for this loop. And just like hierarchical, it is just basically populating with the approvers manager current um, from approvers manager array with the current level just the same adding the current level one and populating the request. And if it is the current level is zero or approval type is the first to respond, it will just mark it as the pending state decision and then increment the static, uh, the current level. So that's all about the flow for creating the approvals based on the approval template selected in the request. So I will hand it over to Priyash who will explain to you more about the adaptive cast and how to design in Power Automate. Okay, over to you Priyash. Thank you, Lin. That was wonderful. So let's look at the other flow, which is for the approvals wherein all the approvers will get notifications one by one based on what they should be doing for that request that is raised. Also notice that the decision pending uh, was not set for the first approver while these approval records were created. In fact, this was explicitly set afterwards so that the flow that I'm going to talk about uh, gets triggered. So let's go ahead and look at the flow we have done. All right. So the name of our flow is notify on approval decision change. Notice that this flow will run only on the update of the approvals record and only on the field, which is decision and the status should be approved, rejected or pending. If there's no decision not required or if there's blank value, it will not trigger this flow, which I'll talk about why we do this. Next, first thing we are doing is checking if the, uh, if the particular approval record is in pending state. If it is in pending state, we will follow the path which is in the true. And if it is not pending, if it is approved, rejected, or if it is something else, or uh, we'll follow the no path. So first, let's look at what happens in the true state. What if the status was set to pending? The first thing is we do is we retrieve the information of the system user because we need their email address and their picture uh, so that we can send them an adaptive card about a certain request that was raised, right? Next stage is after gathering all this information, we create an adaptive card. The reason you see a button to edit adaptive card is because I have turned on the experimental features on Power Automate. Uh, if you don't turn this on, you'll get an older version of this particular action. Uh, this particular action with the new experimental features is uh, superb so that you can um, edit the card and save the progress right away. So you can literally visualize it as we saw in adaptivecards.io and notice that I have passed on the information like the picture and the name uh, from the context of the user that we have retrieved from the approval record. Once that is done, we'll send them a message saying that, hey, thank you for your you know um, response and we'll let the user know. So if you can put the, the submit submission message. Post um, the submit, um, the request is submitted. Next, what we do is first we check if the decision was already set to uh, not required. If that is the case, then stop. Um, this happens. Uh, I'll talk about it shortly. Uh, but if the decision is already not set by some other flow or some other action, and if the response submitted by this particular approver is either approved, then we will just update the same current approval record to either approved or uh, set it to rejected. So both of the steps are parallel in the same branch.
So since the last step of the flow we just saw was approved, we have seen that Lin has approved and also Claire's status is set to pending. Now we will see how this happened. Let's go back to our flow. Remember, this is where we had left off. The final step was to set the current record as approved. Once we do that, this same flow is triggered again because on the decision change of the approval, this flow will run again. Again, this time the decision is not pending. Hence, it will go to the next part. So the first thing that happens here is we retrieve what type of approval template that is either is it first to respond or everyone must respond. Let's consider in this scenario the case is everyone must respond hence it will go to the no block because it's not satisfying the top condition and then we check if the response on the approval was in fact approved. So what will happen here is it will retrieve the next record and whatever the level of approval with a numeric number was set it will add one to it. So meaning whatever was the current level plus one and if it re returns any results meaning there are higher levels of approval records. So we will update that approval status as pending. Meaning that's how you saw Claire's record was updated to pending in this case. Then we have added a termination here because there are more steps that shouldn't happen after we've set the current record to pending. Again this flow will be run because we have set it to pending because it is true, because it is pending, the same process will happen again of sending Claire the adaptive card and uh, then she, her sending back the response and then we'll check if uh, that is supposed to be approved or rejected. And let's assume that in this case Claire has rejected this particular uh, approval record. Again this same flow will run uh, but this time since it is not pending and she has actually rejected that, we will go to the no block. Again we will check for the approved uh, template and uh, of, of course the template here is all must approve but the decision here is uh, rejected. So nothing of the true block will happen to check for any other approvals uh, whereas directly we will go and uh, update the final request record itself. So we'll retrieve the approver details. Next because we wanted to have just one update step here. Uh, if, if as you can see in the comments uh, the decision we have set either if it is true then we use a custom value to set as approved uh, or if it's false we set the custom value to uh, rejected. So as you can see on the approver, uh, approval status field we are using custom value so that we uh, we shouldn't be needing to have two different uh, update requests just for one field. And this change triggers our final flow. So considering the final scenario where we make decisions based on the type of approval either all of them must approve or anyone who responds first. So checking that that if the response approval type is first one to respond we will go in the true block and we will list all the other approvals. Now and we'll set all of those other approvals as no longer required. So since this can happen at any point of time before others respond that is why we check that first check if there's any other um, response that is set to no longer required. If that is the case then the approval process would stop at this point. And that's how um, we have covered how the approvals will happen. So in this final leg of the approval process we will look at how the final approval or rejection is sent to the requester meaning that the requester will receive a notification of whether their entire request was approved or rejected. So as an example if you see on my screen uh, the approval status field it has approved and the requester is me that is Priyesh Vag. So Priyesh will receive a team's notification of whether this entire request was approved or rejected. And you see the Claire is the one who approved the entire request or made the final approval or rejection step. So now if I go and look at my teams I will get a notification of this sort that my request was approved by Claire. Let's look at the rejection example. So this is another request that I have raised as a requester and this is for a quote discount and I say that Green Beans is a company and they have requested for a 35% of discount. 
but the final status was rejected by Claire um, stating you know since I'm the requester I will get a team's notification and she stated that the discount is too high so if you look at the approvers table uh, the final record is rejected and if you look at my teams uh, this is how I get a notification saying that the request was rejected by Claire and I also see the comments let's look at the flow that covers both these scenarios so in this final flow of the approval process what we take care of is letting the requester know if their entire request was approved or rejected so if you look at the name of the flow it says notify the requester about the approval record so this particular flow is triggered on the update of the request entity itself we'll get the requester info and we will based on the decision whether the request was approved or rejected we will send the result it will only trigger on the approval status because that is the only field change we are noting here then on the requests entity will take information from the requester which is look up to the system user itself and will fetch the email address because this is supposed to be used later on and we check if whether the approval status war was approved which is the option set value of one we send this adaptive card and in this adaptive card the recipient is the requester email that is the system user and this is the adaptive card we have built which takes care of the message by letting them know that the request was in fact approved just note for the backslashes in case you are using any double quotations in the message itself you should be using these escape characters and that's it we're not doing anything else in this adaptive card we're just letting them know similarly for the rejected case as well we are sending this flow to the um, requester and in this case we are just letting them know that the request was rejected and then we are not taking any feedback from them and that's it that's the end of the entire request approval process yeah that's how we build a custom approval process using power automate and adaptive cards hope you all learned something we'll upload the whole solution as a zip file to the github and share the down link with you all so that you can install in your environment and try it out okay priyash um do you have any thoughts thanks lynn um so i hope everyone liked our session and uh, with adaptive cards they're really fun and easy to transfer your messages and data across not necessarily you need to go to an application in order to you know pass your message on or you know send data that can take some corrective actions because we all live in an age where we are used to using notifications and taking actions on it and um, adaptive cards is also something that even citizen developers can leverage and make use of it um, and that was our session thank you all for attending today and um, we move to the conclusion. Thank you everyone and enjoy the rest of the Scottish Summit. Thank you for uh, attending our session today. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask the questions or in case you have any questions for later on, uh, you can reach us out on LinkedIn and Twitter. I hope our session was helpful to you and was able to give you some ideas on how you can start designing your custom approval processes using Dynamics 365. Dataverse Connector, Microsoft Teams, and Adaptive Cards. Um, wish you all have a great rest of the Scottish Summit 2021.